Coming up on today's show, we are going to be taking a look at some memorable moments of the year. That's right. We're sharing some of the best segments, guests, and memories of 2022. New Day Cleveland starts right now. Welcome to New Day Cleveland. I'm David Moss. I'm Natalie Herbick, and today we are spending the hour reminiscing on 2022 and really what a year it's been. It sure has. We've gone to some amazing adventures, some great places, met some inspiring people, and tasted your favorite delicious food. Oh, you know it. And of course, we had a lot of fun doing all of this. So we're going to kick things off right now with one of my favorite moments. I took a lesson in salsa dancing from Viva Dance Studio. <laughs> I feel like nothing screams Latin culture more than salsa dancing, and I am so excited to be here at Viva Dance Studio. I have Eddie with me, and you are, I hear, a salsa expert. I, yes, of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you born and raised? Uh, I was born in Puerto Rico. Uh, there I was nine, and then ended up uh, moving to the United States in 85 and lived in Philly, kept moving out west, Pittsburgh, now I'm in Cleveland. First of all, it's a great workout. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I think it brings a community together. Yes. The third, I think it gets people out of their comfort zones and trying something different. It does, it does. There's a lot of people that say, they, okay, I have only two left legs and I, I don't know how to dance. As long as you can walk, you can dance. What do you need to know if you want to be a salsa dancer? Um, I already feel it. Like I'm the emoji right now. I'm the dancing <laughs> emoji. I am ready to go right now. <laughs> I, I would say is, you know, a, a passion for wanting to, to learn to, to move to the music. Um, I think that a lot of people think they have to have that quality of, you know, understanding rhythm and all that stuff. Just, if you love the music, you'll learn it. It's just your body has to kind of learn to do it. So you can come and with, be in the group setting. You can take private lessons as well. That's correct. And so if you come by yourself, it's okay. Sometimes in our group classes, we do rotate. So people get to dance with other, you know, dancers that are, that either come with a partner or, or just come by themselves. And then, so they get to dance with other people too. So they don't just, if they come by themselves, they still get to partner dance with other people. I want to learn a few steps, if that's okay right. with you. Can, right. we, can we get down to basics? I think so. All right. What, what would you teach someone? What are the first things you need to know about salsa dancing? So salsa dancing is walking to a different rhythm, right? Mm -hmm. So if I were to just walk with you backwards and then walk with you forwards. All right. So we're just walking forward and back. If I shorten that, this is the salsa step. The only difference between walking and salsa is just that we change the rhythm. So we go one, two, three, we hold, and then we go five, six, seven, hold. So quick, quick, okay. slow. Now it's no longer walking because we are changing that pattern or that rhythm. So as we do our basic, we're going one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, and we can take that pattern anywhere. We go side, side, and together, side, and together, side, and together, <laughs> and now, again, I just changed the way I move, and because I'm holding your hands or connecting to you, you're doing the same thing. The hips in salsa, or the hips in Latin dancing, is not about whether or not we're swishing our hips, right? It is about bending and straightening our legs. Bend your right knee, and okay, then my right knees. Yep. Yep, that's my right. And then straighten your left, and then we switch. And that's actually what's controlling your hips. Okay. So the hips actually twist around the spine. Later on, we will add settling action, right? Sending it to the side. But when we start talking about that, then people <laughs> do the crazy thing. You're doing good. So this is kind of how you would start with beginners, and yeah. then you get them dancing around this floor like we teach them like wild one, people. We, we teach them between one to six moves okay. or steps, and as they progress or take more classes, they get to learn more and more things that they can add to it. I would highly recommend coming down, letting loose, enjoying yourself, and just giving dance a try. A mm -hmm. Giving dance a chance. Yeah. At Viva Dance Studio.
Viva Dance Studio is located on East 38th Street in Cleveland. If you want to sign up for a class, highly suggest it. Just visit them online. It looked like it was a lot of fun. Okay, mm -hmm. while Natalie was spitting on the dance floor, <laughs> I was soaring in the air. That's right, I took to the skies for a helicopter tour of Cleveland. Check it out. book a tour, visit Paratus Air online, or if you're feeling a little more adventurous, you can take a lesson 
learn how to fly. Very impressive. Mm -hmm. Well, we have more adventures ahead for you after the break. We are meeting a local artist that has a very touching story. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland here. We are going to step into the world of a very special artist. Her work is going to remind you of the Tim Burton style of doing things and her story is going to touch your heart. This is My Asylum. I think it's definitely like got me through a lot. I don't even know what I'd do if I didn't have <laughs> my art skills. I don't know if I'd have anything really to show for myself. When I was really, really little, like six or seven, I was diagnosed with autism and ADHD. Obviously my ADHD has always made me struggle to pay attention. And so a lot of times my mind would wander in class and I'd draw all the time. It really helped me get through school and I think it also gave me the practice. And then like autism, I, I'm very socially awkward. I have trouble interacting with people. I think my, I think through my work I can kind of express what it is I want to say, but I struggle to say. I like to create my own little characters. I never really felt like I fat, fit in with this world, so, so I just created my own world. <laughs> my hand just does the work. I think of things as I go. I'll start like that little guy there and I'll draw some eyes. I'm like, I think I'll make this a bat. Most of the time my mind just wanders <laughs> and I don't even know what it is I'm drawing. <laughs> like I don't use any pencil at all. Like I don't come up with a concept or anything. I just take a pen and just start. I've always been able to use it as like a form of escapism. Like I've struggled with mental health a lot. Uh, like I've said, I do have like social anxiety, so it's just kind of something I turn to when I'm scared to talk. As I've said, I'm autistic, which I also struggle with selective mutism sometimes, which is a symptom of autism, which you can't really control when you just stop speaking. So that happens a lot, and I, that's another way I feel like I can express myself through paintings. I do uh, Tim Burton style caricatures. I just had this idea one day. I just thought, I don't, I'm not a big fan of like the caricatures you see done at like carnivals. And I just thought, what if I did that, but like my own thing? I just thought, okay, I draw in like a Tim Burton type of style. So like, <laughs> why not just do that? It takes me like maybe five minutes. It's pretty quick. I like when people can look at my stuff and just feel happy, I guess. <laughs> like, I love when like I put my art up at, at my shows and people walk by and they just instantly start smiling and I'm like, that makes me feel so good. <laughs> I hope when they buy it, I hope it's because it speaks to them. I think people buy art because it touches them, not necessarily because uh, of skill level, but I think people just buy stuff they can look at and feel something from. So I really hope the people who liked my work enough to spend a large amount of money on it, we're able to get that feeling. How great She's is that? She's me. I'm like, I am so honored right now. Um, let me quickly say that you can find Emily's work at the Cleveland Craft Nook in North Royalton if you would like to go support her, buy her works of art. She also has a Facebook page, and she has shipped her art all over the world and to all but three states in the U.S., so that's pretty impressive. Here is the, the drawing, once again, that she made of me, and I am just... You were blown away as I was by I, her I talent. I love people who see the world differently. Differently. Yeah. She True should artists. be so proud yeah. of who she is and what she's doing because it is great to be different. Yeah. Who the heck wants to be like everybody else? You know, I never got the chance to meet Leonardo da Vinci, but I bet he was, you know, he had a different perspective on things too. And if, if she could meet Tim Burton, I tell you, I've met him a few times, he would he go crazy for work. this. Here's some of the other, these are holiday cards that she made too. And I can show you a couple of these. But it is, it's just that Tim Burton-esque kind of approach to things. And there's so it's much just, heart in them. There is. Yeah. There's a lot of love. And you can just, when you get to meet the artist behind works like this, 
I just think it, it connects you so much more. And Emily, you are so talented. You are so incredibly talented. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. I, I bet you're jealous you don't have one now. I'm sorry. I well, would, maybe we'll get her to make you one, I too. I would mat it and frame it and be very proud to own it. It's beautiful. She, you are truly a talented artist, and we're so glad to have you here in Northeast Ohio. Now, we got to all go out and support you, and I want to meet you in person someday, too. I would love to meet her. Yeah. These are amazing, but you can buy these holiday cards, too. Keep that in mind. Beautiful. And coming up after the break, we're talking something else locally created, footballs. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland and our look back on 2022. So we had a food truck visit the studio this year that blew me away with their Hawaiian style cuisine. His flavors happen to be as vibrant as his personality. So let's meet Mr. Aloha. I have Miko here with me right now from Evie's Luau. You want to talk about Hawaiian food? This is the truck you go to. Hey, what are you better known as? Mr. Aloha, what's up, man? I told you you had the energy. Thank you for bringing your Hawaiian culture to Thank Cleveland. You. Thank you for having us. Like, if, if we weren't here, I don't, I don't know how anybody would ever get Aloha here. So I can't say thank you enough. Oh my God, we, I'm just so happy that you're here because you have the energy, the enthusiasm, the, the passion to bring the great food to Northeast Ohio. You, what did you whip up for us today? Uh, like, loco moco, spam musubi. Have you ever had boba, like a bubble tea? I've had a bubble tea, but wait, do you know that? I don't think I've ever had spam. And that's, what? A, that's a delicacy, right? Like, I mean, you utilize that in all ways. Oh, yeah, food. we cook it in all our food. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, hangover, whatever. Like, the spam musubi is the Hawaiian, like, power bar. It has everything, carbs, protein, like, so it's how delicious. do you eat a Hawaiian power bar? You pick it up like a power bar really? and you just take a bite out you of it. You just bite it? Yeah, yeah. Is I usually seaweed? dabble with the hot sauce, but you literally just pick it up like an ice cream sandwich. All right, I'm ready to yeah. I'm ready to try this. You also made some other dishes, right? Oh, classic. Yeah, absolutely classic. Um, All right, wait. I'm nervous to do this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. You just bite, like take just, a whole bite. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. I hope you like sushi, too, because that's seaweed right there. Nori. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's so simple, but... That is not what I expected Spam to taste like. I know. That's really good. Yeah, and they have like millions of different types of Spam, but this is Missy's secret sauce. Whoa. That's what makes her Spam mousse be so special. Yeah. That is good. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank wow. you. Wow. Yeah, okay, we, so we made what did you whip up in here? Let me move this. Oh, dude, this is, this Ooh. is Loco Moco. Whoa! Yeah, that is a full like meal right there for two if you wanted. I can eat it by myself. You no, you can. Are you serious? Yeah, oh, what, for sure. What's, what's under here? So we got steamed rice layered with the brown gravy. This is a homemade burger steak that we make at home. It's our recipe, topped with two fried eggs and the mac salad. And I'm gonna tell you, if you can get all of this on one fork bite. It will blow your mind. That's what you want to do. Okay. That's yeah. so. Where do you begin? Do you start <laughs> a little bit of this? Yeah, just a little. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. We might have to use a Miko, spoon. Miko, I Here. don't know about this. Yeah. Here, I'll show you. Okay, you do it for me. I got you. Cause you're a pro at this. Clearly. Oh yeah, dude. I've done this so many times. Here, we'll get you just this and the max salad. Did you Is want... that enough? You think? Yeah, okay. my hands are super shaky. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're not. You're used to being in the kitchen, not used to being on the. Yeah. Air well, time. this is a dream come true for us. Like. Ashtabula is such a wonderful community and being able to share that, that look, that's why we do it because you Two would eyes. never think it's that good together. Wow. That's Aloha. Yeah, here, check this out. Wait, okay, now I need the bubble tea. Dude. Wasn't there something else you were whipping up? Where did it all go? Oh, mom's sweet like pork. Chicken. Pork. Yeah. Pork. Okay, what kind of, what kind of um, drink is this again? That's a taro. Taro, that's sweet potato. Yeah. I don't know how to describe the flavor. It, when people ask, I have no idea. I'm not gonna lie to you. This might be my favorite food truck that's ever been on the show. I'm gonna probably say. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, man, these flavors yeah. are it. insane. Yeah. You guys, I would order everything that I've tried so far. So Thank you. Why did you bring it here? Why did you want Hawaiian food here in Cleveland? Because it reminds us of oh, home wow. and we just want to be home. But we love Ohio so much, we fell in love, we couldn't leave. So we're going to bring our home here. Where did your gonna... fiance go? Your wife? Missy, my love! Come here! Yes, Come my on. baby! She, she ran out to get things. I just wanted to make sure she doesn't have a microphone on, but I wanted to get her in this because it's a labor of love between you two. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, it's my love. That's my baby. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. So when it comes to the food, where did that pork, where did the oh, pork baby, go? Oh, baby, can you make a pork plate? Sure, just, I got to wash my hands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I got, I got the gloves on. Food safety is like number one here, and I'm she's got you, so much experience in it. I am so 
happy right now, yeah. and it just shows because you are doing. Do you go all over Northeast Ohio then with this? No, we just started three months ago. So okay. we're going to be at the Tractor Supply in Ashtabula this Friday. Okay. And we're going to go on, you know, for the rest of the weekend, and from there we're just going to take it as we go. This is our first Northeast Ohio winner, so wish me luck. This what? is not usually how we make a plate, but well, that's okay. <laughs> You're telling us what you mean. Now, yeah. Would you be able to have? This would be for you. Uh, would you do <laughs> private? If, if someone wanted you to come to their house to do a food truck, would you do that? Would you do private things yes, too? Yes, we have to sit and talk because the they're four. They're, oh, sorry. I gotta just try There's one little bit of There's four business owners, so we pretty much vote on everything. But yeah, we we want to do all that stuff. I, I, yeah, I know it's a lot of good food. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh yeah. I thank am you. so impressed by you. Thank you Dude. for coming in, Missy. Thank you. This. Food is to die for. I would find them anywhere. Where do they find you? On do you have a website? Facebook, eviesluau.com, but definitely add us on Facebook and Instagram. That's the best way to do it. And then so you will, I promise you, and I can say this with 100% certainty, you will not be disappointed when you try this food. Yeah. This is unbelievable. It's a, and it's a lot David, of food. David, I'm sending it to you, and I don't think I'm coming back for the rest of the show. I'm hanging out right here. Four thousand balls a day. That's right. Since 1955, every football used in the NFL has been made right here in Ohio. We're headed to the Wilson Football Factory. It's a one tank trip. Cows provide us many great products. Milk, butter, cheese, and you can add footballs to that list. Everybody thinks it's pigskin, right? It's a, it's a, it's a cow leather. Meet our tour guide for the day, Andy Wetling, plant manager here at the Wilson Football Factory in Ada, Ohio. Every step of the way is done by hand. So I think a lot of people are surprised at that. They, they think if it's 2022 and there should be robots and there should be something building this football uh, and it's all done by hand. So as you walk through here, you're going to be surprised. It all starts with cow hides that are processed in Illinois and stamped with a tiny W. And they're random throughout the whole hide. As Shelby cuts our panels out, that football is going to have a W in it when it's done. So we can say that's a Wilson football. As the tour progresses, we see firsthand these craftsmen and women assembling all types of footballs. Uh, we make youth balls all the way up to the official size high school college and then the NFL game balls made here. The NFL teams, we start shipping those balls in March so they can prep those. They'll go through those and say quarterback, uh, practice, practice, because the quarterbacks want their footballs prepped a certain way. Plus, all of the footballs used in the Super Bowl are made right here. So we'll make 244 game balls. And that's just for the big game. So we're, we're probably going to hit close to 500,000 footballs this year. It's all sizes from K2, which is the real, real small ball, to the official uh, NFL game ball. We do CFL. It's really cool. As our tour passes through the facility, we see the ball stretched and turned inside out, laced up and inflated. So she's going to load two balls in the mold, put the needle in. It's going to go closed. We're doing is we're putting pressure inside that bladder. And what that does is pushes that leather out to the mold to give it ball shape. After testing and inspection, these footballs are ready for game day, but you can score one for yourself when you stop by the gift shop. The Wilson Football Factory Tour, the only place in the world where you can see NFL footballs being made. And it's just a one tank trip away. Tours at the Wilson Football Factory must be scheduled in advance, so just give them a call. Coming up after the break, we're traveling to the coolest spot in Ontario. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. So we've been looking back on our adventures from 2022. Here's an adventure. We traveled to Ontario to show you the best ways to experience Niagara Falls. And this just might be the coolest spot in the area. Check mm -hmm. it out. Freezing cold in here. How's it going? It's like zero in here or something. It's huh? minus 10 degrees Celsius. Another cool guy we're going to meet here. here. Here's Mark. He's got it going on. And this is all about ice wine. And ice wine is something that I don't know that much about. What's this? Yeah, so what I'm pouring for you here is our Vidal Blanc ice wine. We're in our 10 below room. And the reason why it's 10 degrees Celsius is that's the temperature you have to harvest the grapes at to make an ice wine. So with this wine that you have here, this is an ice wine. Um, when you look at Niagara on the Lake, that's where we are. Most of the world's ice wine is coming from Niagara on the Lake because we have that really delicate climate, warm summers to grow premium grapes, cold winters to freeze those grapes. So you pick these when they're frozen and they're we cold? We pick them when they're frozen, usually in the middle of the night because that's when you're going to have the, the, the appropriate temperature. So it, when it gets to that cold, all of the water is freezing out of the grapes. So you're left just with the, the sugars. 
So it's it's very sweet. It's not. My vote stuck. <laughs> no, it's not. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no. So it's it's a sweeter wine. It's a dessert wine, but it's great with spicy foods. It's great with uh, yeah. with desserts. That's, desserts. What, that's yeah. what I was telling. Them. We're talking yeah. about dessert wines here, and, and you know, people say, well, "Why is it so expensive?" It's yeah. because the, the grapes are smaller, less juice. Yeah, you're having to use ten times the amount of grapes. So if your typical bottle of wine that you think of, a 750 milliliter bottle of wine, is using about four to five bunches of grapes, this is half the size, and it's using about 40 to 50 bunches of grapes because you're getting one drop. One drop of, of ice wine from each grape, which it is, is not a, a delicacy. Lot. I'm telling you, it is a delicacy. It's like sweeter than a raisin, right? But it's more sophisticated, huh? right? So with the Videl Blanc that you have there, a lot of tropical notes: pineapple, mango, some honey notes, almost like marmalade it's qualities delicious. there. I've also got the Cab Franc here as well. I'll pour that. That's a red ice wine, very right. unique. Yeah. So we talked to Jason upstairs. He yep. showed us all the different wines you could have with your food here at Pelham right. Estates. Yeah. So this is like. You have a dessert, a dessert course, or maybe you come down here. You put on the coat, right? And you do this, and then Mark will show you what to drink and how yeah. to drink it and why. Yeah. So it, it basically in here, it's just everything is ice. It's thirteen thousand kilograms or, or thirty thousand pounds of ice. It's a pretty cool space that yeah. our guests get to come and try the ice wine and and sort of feel what it's like to be out harvesting these grapes. So these people got here before me. They're probably pretty stiff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I try not to spend too much time in here. <laughs> Otherwise, I look like the end of uh, of the yeah. Shining. You guys doing okay over there? <laughs> We're doing awesome. See, see, everyone's having a good time yeah, here. Yeah, so this is Cab Franc. This is my favorite, very unique. Oh. This is uh, strawberry, raspberry, and rhubarb notes coming through here. To make a red ice wine is, is very difficult. We're one of the few places that can do it in the world because, again, you need that delicate climate. Um, like I said, with ice wine, we're making about 90% of the world's ice wine, which is pretty incredible. We're a pretty small wow. region. Yeah. But we have that really unique climate there. So well, let's give it a taste. Yeah. Cheers. One thing that you can do with this, drink Whoa. it on its own, but you can put it in a cocktail as well. It like a martini. Big flavor, yeah. it is sweet, it is delicious. Yeah, yeah. so with this, uh, again, the strawberry, raspberry, rhubarb notes, you can use it in place of a vermouth, make a Manhattan yeah. with it. You can pair it with a spicy food. Uh, you can pair it with like a cheesecake. You can pour it over ice cream. There's all sorts of different things that you can do with this. Um, definitely something that's uh, pretty unique with these wines. Mark, every single thing you said was terrific. <laughs> what's really great is I can still talk when it's this cold because my mouth's starting to freeze up. But this is delicious. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, cheers. cheers, brother. Cheers. Double fisting. The only way to do it in the Thank temple you. Low room. Peller Estates, a cool spot. Check it out. Peller Estates is the best place to wine and dine near the falls in Ontario. Okay, so this next stop might be the best place to dine in Northeast Ohio. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just a spot to grab a bite to eat. I met some of the sweetest people mm -hmm. with the biggest hearts at Twisted Burgers and Sushi. Hi. Welcome to Twisted. How many people in your party? One, please. Please take a seat right over here. Oh, you know what? I have a question. Before I sit down for breakfast, can you introduce me to Chris? Sure. Is he back there? Is that him? Yup. I think I found him. All right, let's go around. I'm going to go around here. Thank you, Noah. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Hi, Chris. Good morning. So good to see you. Great Thanks to see you as well. To nice here. to have you. Thanks for coming by. So I have heard so many wonderful things about this program that you're doing here. Thank you. Can you expand on this for us? Because this is amazing. So the students that are here with us today are from uh, Tracy's program at the uh, Medina County Career Center, the uh, Career and Community Experience Program. Uh, they are students who are transitioning from high school into workforce. And what better opportunity and then bring in a vessel of many different careers. Right this way, please. From greeting and seating guests, to serving, to cooking in the kitchen, to rolling sushi. There's so much available and so many opportunities for these students to try a lot of different things. This is Zach, Ian, and Dragan. Hi, and, Dragan. Uh, Hi, Ian. Hi, Zach. Hi, Hi guys. And uh, these guys have been fantastic at rolling sushi. Is it difficult to do, guys? It seems really hard to me. Is Zach, is rolling sushi hard? Yeah. <laughs> it seems hard. Do you do a sushi shuffle? You do that. Ah! Oh, I, <laughs> I heard about the sushi shuffle. Can you do one more? Can you teach me it? Show me. What do I do? Come on. All right, you come just on. do it then. Show you don't Natalie have to teach the sushi me. Show it to me again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many coffees do we have, ladies? Fiona and Felicity are serving. They do a fantastic job. 
It started off where everybody just kind of rotated, tried different things, and little by little, they all kind of fell into their niche. So Makes obviously, sense. Noah's got a gift to gab, so he is, Noah you know, he's, is he's booming on the door. Um, the girls, and there was someone making mm, crab cakes back in the kitchen. Yep, that's Brian back there in the kitchen. So Brian is doing a great job. He found his niche. He just he loves to cook. He says he loves to cook. So he's been back there with us, and he does crab cakes, egg rolls, and a lot of the stuff that we make in-house for our everyday menu, he's back there helping. It makes me feel great, uh, but more importantly, it makes the, the kids feel great. So they see the faculty, they see the families coming in all the time, but the neat thing about it is, you know, when the doors are open, we've got just regular everyday customers walking in and they don't even know. And I guess that's the best thing is, if you don't tell them that these students are serving, they, they don't know, they just, they, they get, it's great service, it's great food, everything hits the table the way it's supposed to hit. And if you didn't tell them what this was all about, they, they would have no idea. The lifelong skills then that you're helping to create for these kids that can go off, do wonderful careers once they're done with school. Absolutely. And and be a part of society just like anybody else. Yes. Tracy, I think it's time I'm ready to eat breakfast. Hi. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited too. Girls, can you do me a favor? Can you run in the back and grab breakfast for us, please? Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. That food looks delicious. Oh, I'm so gonna bring good. you over. We can sit down. Did you eat yet? Because I think I need you to eat with um, me. I was waiting for you to eat. <laughs> I honestly am so thrilled to be here. I can't imagine what this must be like for you guys to have these kids be a part of this. This is life changing for our students. For them to have an opportunity to come into a workplace, to work side by side with other employees, doing things that other people would be getting paid to do is a huge life changer for our students. And I know Chris, having put this all together, has been a, a lifesaver for He's you. He's amazing. His willingness to open up his business, his willingness to open up uh, his heart and, and soul to our students so they have opportunities that otherwise wouldn't be available to them if not for opportunities like this. It takes all of us, um, but at the end of the day, it's this or that, are given the opportunity and once they know what they need to do, we back off and they just shine. I know where I am going to come for breakfast from here on out on Mondays because <laughs> I, the you. service is has been impeccable. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's time to begin. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. I don't want to leave. I'm <laughs> breakfast? Can we do lunch and dinner too? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. We have sushi rollers, so you'll be all set. I love it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for Tracy. coming. Twisted Burgers and Sushi is located on Boardman Alley in Medina. Told you they would be great. Well, still to come, I am snuggling up with the sloth. Some more fun here, folks. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland and a review of 2022. It's not New Day Cleveland without a recipe <laughs> from the kitchen of the Moss Man. And this one absolutely mesmerized me. Here it is. This is a big, giant grouper. Three pound grouper. I'm going to make this in a salt cast which is very, very interesting. So there it is, it's about a three pounder. You cook it at 400, 425 degrees for 15 minutes per pound, and you make it in a salt cast. So here we have three pounds of salt, and I've got four egg whites here, and we're gonna put the egg whites in here. So you take this salt, and you encase the fish in it, and you roast it. Not gonna be salty. He says, no, it's not salty. It just holds all the juices in because the skin is still on it. So when you buy the fish, you get the fish scaled and the gills clean and of course clean totally on the inside. And then you just mix up this salt mixture. So the egg whites sort of hold it together. So I'm gonna set this off of here for a second. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little bottom for this fish, something to sit on so he's comfortable. So why don't we put a couple lemons on here? A little flavor, huh? Maybe some thyme, it's time for thyme. We're gonna put that under here. And maybe even a little parsley, who cares, right? And then we're gonna take our fish, but you want this thing totally encased. So I got it here. Okay, so the egg white's gonna hold this together. 
I'm gonna cut just like this. And like I said, the oven, 425, 400, 15 minutes a pound. So there it is. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. Break the salt cast open, then gently peel back the skin. Then cut the filet off the perfectly baked fish, and there you have it. Serve maybe with rice, some vegetables, and enjoy. That's this week's Moss Man's Pantry Raid. I kid you not, that was one of the best fish I've ever eaten. It was unbelievable. You know what's unbelievable about it? It was really simple to do. My barber, Armando, he's the guy, yes. he told me how to do it, and he taught me how to do it while I was sitting in a barber chair. He's just telling me, telling me, telling me, that's how easy it is to do. And I gotta tell you, when, when you put it together, it works best with red snapper, really. Red snapper is mm -hmm. the best. When you put it together, it seems like you don't know what you're doing, but also it comes together like a kindergarten clay project, you know? And then when you, when you bake it off and you bring it out, it is hard as a rock. It is really, you know, crack, 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 and inside it's tender and wonderful and beautiful. I'm so impressed by you. You said you learned it in a chair. I couldn't have learned it in a chair, but I'm telling you, it was so good. It's as easy as finger painting. Give it a try. That's why I just eat what he makes, and I'm happy, <laughs> right? Hey, you know what? One of the other things I did this year that was truly unexpected, but unbelievably amazing, was snuggling up with a sloth. I'm telling you, I was in heaven. <laughs> I think I can safely say that going to film segments for New Day is my favorite part of the day. Today is no exception, guys. We are here at our zoo to you in Medina. So you know what that means. There's animals involved, and I wore my thick sweatshirt today because I get to meet a sloth and some of her friends. I'm so excited. Come on, let's go inside. Hi, Hi Terry! Welcome to our zoo to you! I'm so excited to be here, you have no idea. Thank you for having me! Oh, thanks for coming. Cool, so the, I already see some friends here. Yes, but. we have, <laughs> that is Sheldon, that is our three-band armadillo. Hi and Sheldon! He is one of our many unique pets here at our house and he travels and does all of our animal programs with us. And who do we have here? Hello! This is Floyd, my blue and gold macaw. Hi Floyd! He is super sweet, really popular, goes to all my nursing homes. Hi. And he's gonna give you a kiss. Oh, thank you! He likes to flirt with all the ladies. Oh, you're cute. He wants another I'll take kiss. It. I'll take another kiss. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you! And who do we have over there? So this is my kookaburra, Sydney. And when I call to her, she thinks I'm one of her flock, and she responds. Hello, and good morning to you. Look at these two. Do you guys like each other? Do they like each other? They don't bother each other. Look Floyd just says it. Floyd gets annoyed by her laugh. <laughs> He's a typical guy, you know? <laughs> so this is Willow, <gasps> our two-toed sloth. She's about a year and a half. Oh, She's going to reach for hi, you. Hi. Do I just, do I let hands her just around. Yep. Okay, hand around. There you go. Oh. And then Kyler, come on over. Oh, this is your son. Hi, Kyler. He's going to help feed her. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is so so our sloths eat about three times a day. So this is her lunch portion, and that is some greens, squash, zucchini, and sweet potato. She's so soft. She is, she is so popular. She's the sweetest, sweetest girl. She loves to give hugs. Oh my gosh. So she's really acclimated to humans. She is, she's captive born. So captive born sloths versus wild sloths are very different. Willow knows nothing but love and um, human touch, and she craves it and thrives with people, oh love God. and honor. This is so amazing. So when people come, this is what happens? This is what happens. So we are one of the only sloth encounters where you can actually get to hug on them. A lot of sloths do not like handled, but Willow demands it. She just loves everybody. Um, she's never known a stranger, just wants to hug on you, sleep on you. Um, so you get to come in, you get to work with Willow, and our sloth encounters are about an hour long, and you get to work with her, and then we go back to the rainforest room, and we get to work with our other two sloths, Asher and Ivy, and we get to interact and hand feed them as well. The fact that you have three of these, is there's another one? That is 
is Asher eating on the floor. He's our five-year-old two-toed male. And then we have Ivy oh my gosh, hello. hanging. And she's our two-year-old female. I can't thank you enough for having me. And this has made my day. And I'm sure it's going to make a lot of others. Uh -huh. I, I guarantee you, you will have people cry. I almost cried when I saw them. Trust me. People, I'm right there. People do get emotional when they see these guys. They're just amazing. And, and our sloths are just really love people, love to interact with people. This is so cool. What a neat experience. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for coming. Can you tell I'm still beaming? Mm -hmm. I enjoy that so much. If you would like to book a sloth encounter session with our zoo to you, you can visit their website, but be patient because they have booked up a lot. People love going to see the yeah, sloths. It looks like a lot of fun. Okay, still to come on New Day Cleveland, folks, we're making exercise fun. How about Yay. that? Yay! Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. Our look back on 2022 is coming to an end. So this year moved by so fast. And here's another way to get moving. They're making exercise fun at AOK -OK Fitness. And I'm here with the owner, Kim Flaherty. Kim, Hi. I am just so happy to be here. We are having a party this morning. We are. It's always a party here at AOK -OK Fitness. And we make it a fitness party that is so fun. You will love it. You I will mean, love this workout. I will tell you what. I was trying to learn some of the moves earlier. Again, I am not the best dancer. But everyone here made me feel like I really was a part of the family. Absolutely. And I think what that our instruction, our staff can do is show all levels how to be included in this workout. Keep it low impact or go high. It's all up to them, but the energy is there and there is nothing like being part of a group fitness program. So let me ask you, this is just one class that people can take, but you have all sorts of classes, again, for every different age level, we do. for every different fitness we do. level. We have, we have bar programs, we have yoga programs, we've got high impact classes and low impact classes. We've got TRX, we've got TRX yoga, and, and just so much fun, you can see, this is, this is every day at AOK. I mean, this is incredible. And, you know, Natalie even mentioned earlier, this also helps with your mental well-being. Not only are you getting in shape physically, but this is helping the all-around person. I believe so much of group fitness is about the social aspect. These people look forward to coming and seeing each other, and when you don't show up, they're the first people to give you a call and say, hey, where have you been? And honestly, that energy and that, that feel-good endorphin that's released is just, it's better than any high I've ever had. So, I, honestly, you've got to come and try high fitness and all the classes that go together and just enjoy so much. I mean, it's so hard for me to stand still. I know! I, definitely, I want to jump! Can you teach me some Absolutely. of these dance moves? Absolutely! Let's get in there and all do right, it! Alright, let's do it! Woo! Again, I'm not very good, but I try! Alright, so, Woo! while I'm doing this, where can people find the list Woo! of all of your classes available here at AOK -OK Fitness in Well, Chicago? two ways. AOKFitness.com or they can download our app and purchase and look at our schedule and see all the descriptions right there. Oh my goodness, where are we at? are watching that are saying, I don't know if I feel comfortable doing this. You also offer a new member. We do. We have a new client special, 20 classes for $20, so that everybody can give it a try and try it all. It's all right, perfect. So this is AOK -OK Fitness. It's here in Strongsville on Pearl Road. It's in the Staples Plaza. Plaza. Yes. Or the AOK -OK Fitness Plaza. Yes, yes. And yes. then coming up a little bit later in the show, we're going to slow things down just a little bit because, again, you offer something for everyone. So I'm looking forward to wiping yeah. off a little bit of this sweat. AOK -OK Fitness is located on Pearl Road in Strongsville. You can learn more about their classes by going online. That wraps up our show, folks. No, and that's a wrap more. on 2022. I know. <laughs> one more next year. But it's been a busy year. And we really do thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being part of it. And as always, if you have a suggestion for the new year, just let us know. You can email us at newday at fox8.com or reach out to social media. Boy, it's been good. I'm looking forward to 2023, though. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm still David Moss. I'm Natalie Herbick, and I we'll believe. we'll see you on <laughs> the next New Day Cleveland. So long. <laughs>